story of Sarah Farman. Late that night, Sarah had a very important decision to make. Should she become partners with her father now, move to the farm and help manage it and do the work? Or should she let her father have her half of the farm, knowing it would eventually become hers anyway? What would it be like living on the farm and working there all the time? She had just gotten a promotion and a sizable raise at wearables. Sarah started to think things over in her mind. Do I really want to lose all the effort I've put into my work forever? If I did not like it at the farm, they would not take me back, at least not at the level I have achieved now. Jeff is doing very well at the plant, and he loves it. Would he leave his work to be with me? I wouldn't want him to change his life so radically for me. I need to talk to him. Hi, Jeff. What do you think about my decision? Sarah said. Should I go back to the farm with Dad? Jeff gave this some serious consideration. This could be a turning point, no matter how I answer this, he thought. I don't want to lose Sarah, so of course I would go with her. But how do I feel about that? A very long pause. Jeff, are you still there? said Sarah. Jeff finally said, I'm thinking, Sarah. This is your choice, not mine. I do not want to influence your decision because if I do, you might resent me for it, and I cannot have that. This is up to you. You're right, there's no easy out for me, said Sarah. I'm staying here. Dad can handle the farm, at least for now. Good, you've made the decision, said Jeff. Now we can both get some sleep knowing the direction from here. In the morning, Sarah called her dad and then the solicitor. Sarah and Jeff were spending most of their spare time together and sometimes time that was not spare. Since he lived across the street from where she worked, it was easy to pop over there when she was done for the day at her job or eat lunch there. Jeff spent any of his time that was not taken up with work with Sarah. On a Saturday, when they were both free from work, they decided to go visit the castle nearby. They had never been there, and it was only recently open to the public. It was close enough they could walk. It was a jovial outing. They decided to pick up some food for a picnic at the nearby store and brought an old blanket too. They picked up a couple apples, some cheese, some thin sliced meat, some bread. Sarah brought some condiments from home in a bag. When they arrived, there was some sort of demonstration of fighting techniques going on, and a number of people had gathered to watch. They watched for a while, but were not really interested, so they spread their blanket and put their stuff down on it. Jeff was feeling particularly close to Sarah. Sarah was thinking how wonderful Jeff was. He said, it looks like they built some stairs or scaffolding going up to the old castle wall. You want to go up? Sure, said Sarah. They started up the stairs, each wondering how many there were. There were some young people who were making a game of who could get to the top first. The young people's mother was saying to them in a loud voice, Be careful, you could trip and hurt yourself. They walked up the steps at a leisurely pace, but both were a little winded anyway when they got to the top. When they caught their breath, they looked out over Farland. What a fantastic view! Sarah said the residents sure picked a great spot for the castle back then. Most of the buildup was not out there, but you can see forever from here. 
I think that is the hill behind Farmore, and I can see across the river to the harbor. Is that the beach? We should go there sometime. It sounds like fun to me, said Jeff. Sarah was feeling very exuberant, and you could tell by the way her voice rose. Jeff never felt closer to her. He turned to her and said, Sarah, I love you. Sarah was smiling so big she thought her mouth would break. She said, I love you too, Jeff. It was the first time either of them had uttered the words. Sarah started to cry. Jeff reached out for her and pulled her in close. He whispered in her ear the word, forever. Now Sarah was beside herself, but she knew just what to do. And she turned her tear-streaked face up to him and they kissed the most magic kiss there ever could be. They became one, then and there. That was it. The next thing out of Jeff's mouth was, Will you marry me, Sarah Farman? She said yes immediately, and they stayed in that embrace for what seemed like eternity. Then Sarah said, When? Jeff said, As soon as possible. It was at that point that Sarah's mind started bracing. I need to tell Grandma. Oh, that made her sad because Grandma was gone. I need to tell Dad and Emily and all the girls at the place I used to work in at Howe Street and everybody at Simpson Shoes in Shell Hill. I'm going to need some time off too. Maybe not too much, but a little. And oh dear, there is a lot to do to get married. I need shoes and I need a new dress too. Jeff knew Sarah well and could tell by the look on her face that she was kind of swirling in her mind. So he said, we have plenty of time. We can get everything sorted. We'll do it one by one. Don't worry. I'm in this too. We'll figure it out. That simple statement was all she needed. She knew everything would be okay. She trusted Jeff and she was so happy. After one last look around, they went down the stairs and had a lovely picnic. Even the fighters seemed more interesting now. To be continued.